Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this live event. Um, my name is Vashti Harrison. I'm really excited to be able to share this World uh, Read Aloud Day with you guys. Also, Black History Month here in the United States. Um, I see I've got lots of people from all around the world. I see uh, folks from Virginia, England, Scotland, um, Mrs. Mancini's third grade class in Ardsdale, New York. Um, someone some a uh, Miss Sorrentina's class from Fairfax, Virginia, lots of folks, uh, Yousef in the sixth grade in Canada. So I'm really happy to have everyone here and I'd love to share you guys share with you guys um, a little bit about myself um, and some stories. So today what we're gonna do is uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the work that I do. I'll talk to you about where to get inspiration for your work. Um, and because it's a virtual field trip, I'll show you a little bit of my studio and where I do my work. Um, I'm going to share some from my book, Little Leaders and Little Legends, and we'll end with a drawing session. And you guys can grab your pencils and your paper and follow along with me. And at the very, very end, I'll answer some questions from you guys. So be sure to put that in the chat. Um, so let's get started. We've got a lot to get through. So I'm going to share my screen and go right into a presentation for you guys, okay? So um, I'm here in Virginia. I uh, had to come home to be with my parents because of COVID-19, but I'm really happy to be able to share um, some of uh, some pictures from my studio. <laughs> um, sadly, I wouldn't, I wasn't able to um, walk you guys around there, but you know, everything's virtual these days. So that's where we are. So we'll start at the beginning. Uh, these are some of the books that I've written and illustrated. Um, so Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History, Little Dreamers, Visionary Women Around the World, and Little Legends, Exceptional Men in Black History. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about those um, a little bit later, but let's start from the beginning. That's me. My name is Vashti Harrison. I'm an author and an illustrator and a filmmaker. What that really just means is I love to tell stories. I love to pair those stories with pictures. Sometimes um, the idea will come to me and I'll think that'll make a really good picture book or that'll make a really good movie. I'm really mostly just interested in being able to tell a story in the way that I can share with people in the most successful way possible um, because I just really want to entertain folks. Um, so here are a couple of examples. So um, here's an example of one of my drawings. Um, it's playing really, really fast. I promise I don't actually draw this fast. So this is an example that I drew on my iPad um, in, a, in an app called Procreate, and so it recorded all of my strokes. But you know, I'm kind of just making things up as I go. I'm really just interested in capturing a moment. I put the lighting in first to kind of celebrate this moment. But look how many times I draw her legs. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm changing my mind a couple of different times. And see, I ended up with something um, pretty simple. But um, that's just an example of, of how my mind works when I'm, when I'm creating. I'm really mo more interested in making sure there's um, a feeling that a reader is or a viewer is going to get from looking at the picture. Um, and so what I wanted in this one was like celebratory. Um, so, you know, everyone's always like, oh, Bastian, you're so good at creating. <laughs> Where do you get your ideas? And I tell people ideas can come from anywhere. I'm not sure if you can tell what this is. It's a picture of an apple. Um, I was working one day and I took a, a lunch break and I got myself an apple. I cut it in half and I ate the other half. I left one half sitting on my desk and I looked at it a little bit later and I thought, you know what, that kind of reminds me of something. So I took a picture of it and then I started drawing on top of it digitally. Maybe you guys will be able to see what I saw. <laughs> okay. So that's uh, Mike Wazowski from Monsters Incorporated. That's my very silly example of how sometimes ideas can come from anywhere. You just have to be open to seeing them. It's sort of like staring up at the clouds and figuring out a picture that's up there. That's really all creativity is. You just have to be open to new ideas coming from random places. And you never know what that's gonna spark in you. Maybe it'll create, you'll invent an entire new story or a world or a character from these little things that only you are seeing. So um, I take that creativity and I'm very really lucky that I get to uh, do that for my job. I get to create books and 
posters and all kinds of things. So here's um, a photograph of my workspace. This is from my apartment in Brooklyn, New York. I was working from home before anybody else was. And uh, so I kind of do all of my work right here. I keep lots of books around me. I'm constantly reading and constantly, you know, uh, educating myself on the way other people tell stories. I I work in a lot of different media. While most of my books are illustrated digitally on the computer, which you can see um, to the right hand side of the screen, drawing tablet, I also keep lots and lots of drawing tools around me. This is like the cleanest my studio has ever been, so I had to take a picture of it, but it's mostly, it's more messy than that for sure. So you can see a little bit closer. You know, I've got markers, I've got journals. I'm really just interested in kind of um, being able to uh, tell stories with as many different tools as possible. And something that's kind of weird about me is I kind of draw differently when I use different tools. So it's interesting and important for me to keep those things around. Um, you can see these pictures of the little legends right here. And these are giant cardboard cutouts that I got from this set of Good Morning America. I kept them, um, but now they're all in the corner. So one day I'll be able to do something with them. Uh, there's me looking kind of sad, but you can see I kind of keep pictures all around. Um, you know, when I'm creating a new idea, I kind of just pick, pick, post it up on the wall to kind of keep me inspired. Um, so here are some of the different tools I use. Here's some watercolors and some gouache and colored pencils and markers. You know, now, I haven't been able to do um, any books yet that are with traditional materials, but I'm constantly um, challenging myself to do new things with new tools. And I think it's really important for my creative practice because new ideas come to me when I'm creating. So it's always important to keep creating in that way. Here's some more, some pastel pencils and chalk pastels. Um, yeah, so I have a lot of fun doing that stuff. Here's, some, here's another example. I've got really into um, collage. Um, so here's me painting a bunch of uh, papers to do some collage work. Um, you know, it's it goes in waves, so I try out lots and lots of different things. And while I'm doing me, this, it's sometimes a break from the books that I'm working on, but it's also a way for me to kind of clear my mind while I'm thinking about the stories that I'm creating and also how to tell the stories I'm about to write. So um, it may look like that I'm just illustrating a little picture, but in my brain, there's a lot more going on. So that's some examples of the work that I do. Um, again, here's another picture of my, my digital drawing studio. And um, so this is what I'll, um, I'm drawing on a drawing tablet. It's actually right below me. So when I do my drawing demo a little bit later, that's what, you, what I'll be working on. So I'm really excited and happy to be doing this work. I'm really fortunate that I get to do it all the time. Here are two examples of books that I've illustrated. Um, so in this case, all of the words were written by somebody else and I designed all of the pictures. I design, I figure out everything that goes on the page from the costumes to the sets to, uh, you know, everything that you see. I, I always compare it to like making a movie. It's like I'm casting the characters, I'm uh, designing the, the sets and the costumes, but also the camera layout and what the characters are doing. So I'm doing some of their acting for them. And so, you know, it requires me to uh, challenge myself in lots of different ways in terms of my creativity. And, you know, it's really fun because up until this point, all of the books I've written and illustrated have been nonfiction. So my books, Little Leaders, Dreamers, and Legends, these are all filled with the stories of real life people. So when I'm working on these books, I'm doing a lot of research, reading about these real people and trying to figure out how to best emulate that on the page. Uh, and when it comes to those other books, I get to be a little bit more free and just make things up as I go. Um, so today I'm gonna read two bios, one from uh, Little Leaders and one from Little Legends. So if you guys want to kind of relax, sit back, I'm gonna read you a story. Um, and if you wanted to follow along, today I'm going to read about Alma Woodsy Thomas and she's on page 20 of your books if you, if you already have the book and you wanna open it up. Um, so chill out and listen to my voice as I read this story aloud, okay? So. Alma is one of my favorites, so I figured I would start with an artist because I feel so akin to the artists in these books. So Alma Woodsy Thomas was born in 1891 and she passed away in 1978. She was a teacher and a painter. Born in Columbus, Georgia, Alma grew up in a home surrounded by lush landscapes and beautiful plants. 
In her youth, Alma showed promise in architecture, but she was truly in love with art. She said that when she walked into her first art classroom in high school, it felt like entering heaven. She enjoyed working with children and pursued a career in teaching kindergarten. She taught arts and crafts for several years before attending Howard University. She was the first student in Howard's brand new art department whose founder encouraged her to paint full time. Upon graduation though, she returned to her first love, education. She devoted her life to children, teaching at Shaw Junior High School for 35 years. She continued painting and pursued her master's degree in art education at Columbia University in New York City during her summers off. She's most often associated with the group of artists belonging to the color field movement. That is, painters who worked only with large shapes or fields of color to express themselves. When she retired from teaching in 1960, Alma concentrated on painting full time. She had a big art show at Howard University for which she created something totally different from anything she had done before. Inspired by nature, she created paintings with tiny bright rectangles and repeating shapes. It became her signature style. In 1972, she was 80 years old. When she was 80 years old, Alma's paintings were exhibited at the Whitney Museum of American Art. This was the first ever solo exhibition of an African-American woman at one of America's most important art museums. Alma is truly a testament to being dedicated to the things you love and having the patience to let it grow. Um, and here you can see the quote that I wrote down, color is life. Um, so here are some photos of Alma Woodsy Thomas in her studio, and you can see examples of her paintings behind her. Um, now these colors are in black, uh, these photos are in black and white, but you can imagine just how vibrant um, they were. You know, my favorite thing about her is that, you know, she spent so long dedicating her, her life to creativity and to teaching creativity to other people. And there, I think there's so much value in that. Um, and to know that she finally got, um, credit for all of the work she did at 80 years old it's kind of amazing i know lots of people talk about success and wanting to be successful really early but she had a lot of patience and always put her love and her heart into her work and fortunately people saw that so i think that's so beautiful um so the next person i'm going to read about is from the book little legends exceptional men in black history and this is garrett morgan so if you want to follow along he's on page 16. So Garrett Morgan was born in 1877 and passed away in 1963. He was an inventor. Garrett was always interested in how things worked. He had no schooling past grade school, but he didn't let that hold him back. By the age of 14, he had worked as a handyman, and by 18, he had taught himself enough to get jobs at sewing machine companies around Cleveland. In 1901, Garrett sold his first invention, a part for a sewing machine, and a few years later, he was able to open up his own shop. He soon became a successful businessman and inventor. In 1914, Garrett filed a patent for his next invention. After witnessing a fire, he noticed that the firefighters combated the blazes with no protection over their eyes or face. He thought that a mask could help shield the men and keep them from inhaling the smoke. He devised a safety hood that covered the face using a hose to access fresh air from below. Many people were reluctant to buy inventions made by a black man, so he often hired white actors to conduct demonstrations so customers would give his creations a chance. Eventually, his business grew and fire departments in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York were using his hood. Garrett wasn't just an inventor and businessman though. He was also a hero. After a tunnel explosion in 1916, Garrett, using his safety hood, rushed in to pull out workers. He saved two lives. In 1923, he filed a patent for his next invention. At the time, automobiles were on the rise and were sharing the road with horse-drawn carriages, bicycles, and pedestrians. Traffic signals went from stop to go with no notice, and it was dangerous. After Garrett witnessed a terrible crash, he had an idea for a warning signal. This was a precursor to the red, yellow, and green signals used today. Garrett paid attention to the world around him and looked for opportunities everywhere. He proved that inventing wasn't just about coming up with new ideas, but could also be about improving upon existing ideas, helping people, and making the world a safer place. 
So that's just like an incredible, amazing story. Here are a couple of photos of Garrett when he was very young. And that's um, a recreation of his safety hood. Now, sometimes people um, confuse this story for the, the, um, the gas mask, but this was really a hood that protected the firefighters and it had a long hose and pulled fresh air from below. Because if you've ever seen a fire or seen smoke, you know that the smoke rises up and Garrett paid attention to that. Um, so I think that's so like so wonderful to know that, um, you know, he was interested in making the world safer for, for just regular folks. And here is his um, safety signal. Um, you can see it's not exactly the, the red, yellow, and green stoplights that we have, but it used those colors and it, it um, functioned in a very similar way. And it's just, it seems so simple and so obvious that we use this now, but uh, you know, he noticed a problem and wanted to make the world safer. So I think that that is such a wonderful asset. And I think, you know, we often think about, you know, inventors, always needing to come up with something brand new, something that never existed. But I think it's really important to know that inventing can also be about improving upon things and making the world a better place for everyone. Okay, so those are just two of the bios in all the books that I've written. So there's lots, lots of more stories to discover and people to learn about. But now I wanna talk a little bit about the art in the books. Now, um, you may have noticed that they all have the same face and that there are these little kid illustrations. I could have drawn each of these famous people to look like themselves, but instead I decided to create a little character. And I imagine that this was a little kid dressing up as these famous people. Um, and I wanted it all, them all to feel the same. That way when they all line up, it can kind of feel like maybe it's the same kid dressing up as all of these people. And in a way, maybe you would be able to see yourself in any one of them. So, you know, when they line up, here's what happens. It's kind of like a little animation and it kind of happens when you flip through the pages in the book. And that's what, that's why I put all of the pictures in the same place. Um, I'll talk a little bit more. Lots of people ask me, why are the eyes closed? I'll talk about that when I go into the drawing demo, which is coming up soon. But you guys may know that I already have a coloring sheet which you can fill out for yourself to, you know, to draw someone that inspires you. Now, if you use the Flipgrid app, there are um, resources that you can download um, with your class and, and work on those worksheets. Um, but I wanted to show you some examples of how I do this. So I drew my mom who inspires me. Um, you can see, uh, I drew her very her short haircut. She always wears a lot of shiny eyeshadow, these kind of neutral colors. There we go. So that's my mom. And because I couldn't leave him out, I drew my dad too. Let's see. So my dad has this like iconic kind of sideways haircut and I put that in. He's always wearing these, these sweats that don't necessarily match with each other. <laughs> um, and then I was like, oh no, no, no. My dad always has a ball cap on. Um, his name is Ted, and he always wears uh, a Tampa Bay hat. And, I, and but he always tells people that it stands for Teddy Bear, so that that's very iconic for my dad. And people always point out, "Fast, you left out the the shoes, you left off his feet." And I think it kind of works because he always has these these white socks on. So those are two examples. You can use this um, this coloring sheet to color someone who inspires you. Or if you're feeling up for the challenge, and I have a feeling many of you are, um, you can draw along with me. So what I'm going to do is leave here, and I'm going to open up my drawing tablet, and we're going to draw um, in my uh, drawing application, so I use Photoshop. So this is what I do when I'm illustrating a book. So you guys are gonna see this in a quick second. So, um, like I said, I draw with lots of different tools. I don't necessarily always have to work um, digitally, but one thing that, uh, like that one thing that I said before was that I kind of draw differently when I use different tools. Um, so. I promise you don't have to have fancy tools to be an artist, um, but here I'm gonna show um, how I do it in Photoshop. And you can follow along with your, your pencils, your paper, whatever you like. And um, if you have a digital drawing app, you can use that as well. Okay, 
So you should be able to see my, my screen now. So it's a big white screen. I'm gonna, just going to write, hello. Okay, let's move that away. So, um, when I draw, I always start off by making a lot of kind of loose, sketchy lines. It's really helpful to kind of practice making a bunch of circles. Now, one thing that I know that happens with a lot of young people is that, because it happened with me, was that uh, I always felt like everything needed to be so perfect. Like I couldn't draw a perfect circle, so that must mean I have to erase it. That's definitely not true for me anymore. I actually love making a mess and I love seeing all these sketchy lines. So the way I start this is I kind of make a circle, but I make it a little bit imperfect, kind of like a, a chunky squarish circle. <laughs> so imagine if you took a circle and smushed it down. Now I sometimes do this part in pencil and go over top of it with a marker or, you know, or a pen and maybe I'll go back and erase those lines. But like I said, I kind of like the, the sloppy <laughs> style these days. And so I leave those lines in there. It kind of reminds me of like where the work came from. Um, okay, so now that we have our face shape, um, we're gonna do everything else with something that everyone knows how to draw. That is the letter C. I'm gonna give you a sharper line. There you go. So the letter C, we're gonna make it kind of like a lazy C and then we're gonna roll it down onto its side. So it's sideways. And these are going to be the shapes that we use for everything else. So let's see. We're gonna do one here for one eye and another one. We're gonna flip that shape upside down and do some eyebrows. We're gonna flip it. We're gonna keep a nice little one in the center for our nose. And we're gonna flip it one more time and make a smile. That's pretty much it. That's how you draw the little leader. And you can take this shape and turn it into any one that you like anyone that inspires you. You can keep going, you can add another C for an ear. You can add some hair. Let's see, I kind of have my hair in a ponytail, kind of to the side, so I'm gonna do these shapes. I don't know if my ears are that big. And let's just pretend I have two big puffs. And then you can just keep coloring and do whatever you like to fill this in. So I'm gonna add a little color. That's way too small. Make it bigger. This is not my favorite brush, but we can keep filling these things out. So you guys can keep following along with me. Um, and I want you to start thinking about your questions that you're going to ask. Um, so what I'm going to do is finish up my drawing. Um, and before we go into our Q&A, which you, you can put your questions into the chat and I'll get them. Um, before we do that, I would love to take a selfie with you. So if you want to, while you're finishing up your drawings, you can um, grab a phone or something to take a picture with, and you're gonna take a picture with your computer, and I'm gonna wave my hands and smile, and you guys can take a picture with me. But before we do that, let's finish up this drawing. So many of you may have seen me do this demonstration before, so I'm gonna tell you um, a few tricks and tips to take this to the next level. So sure, we can color it in, but we can add a little bit of texture um, in the hair by adding some highlights to make it kind of shiny. So I take white and I add some highlights at the top. Um, and a lot of folks ask me, why do I draw the eyes closed? Um, now, one thing that I was thinking about when I was creating these books was I wanted to create a character that was a little kid dressing up as these famous people. So I kind of imagined that they're kind of 
closing their eyes and imagining themselves in the worlds of these wonderful people. Um, but you guys are more than welcome to open up their eyes. So <laughs> a little bit weird right here, but I'm adding some white. I did a little backwards. So what you could do is take another C and put it over top. and make the eyes, the eyes are open now. I'm adding some white so you can see where this is gonna go. And some eyeballs. So now this person is looking this way. <laughs> and they have a lot of eyeliner on, which kind of works because I have a lot of eyeliner on. Um, you could add some flush on their cheeks, you could add whatever you like. So if I was drawing my mom, I would add more eyeshadow or something like that. So um, you can get a little bit crazy, go a little bit wild. You can invent your new characters, you could draw yourself, or you could draw someone that inspires you. There are limitless opportunities here, so um, I want you to feel like it's totally fine to make a lot of mistakes and to um, just be a little bit wild. So if I wanted to add different colored curly cues here, I could do that. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen because honestly, I could keep drawing for hours. And if I don't stop myself, I won't. And you guys will be here all day long watching me draw. Um, but um, one thing that you can do is continue the conversation online. You can talk to other folks who have um, been working on these drawings. Um, uh, you can check out um, Flipgrid for, and, and the hashtag Flipgrid for um, other folks that have worked on these, these pieces with you, um, alongside you. Okay, so now you guys should be able to see me. Hello again. I hope your drawings are turning out really well. I hope you can um, share them with me. So let's just take a few seconds. We're gonna take 30 seconds. I would love for you guys to take a picture with me. So grab your cameras or whatever you like, and I'm gonna kind of stay up here and hold my book up and just, Kind of wave as you take a picture so um, I can keep talking or you guys can keep finishing up your drawings but I would I really look forward to seeing these pictures online um, be sure to hashtag um, let's see you can tag me on Twitter at Bashi Harrison um, you can tag Flipgrid at Flipgrid also Little Brown which is my publisher for my book so at Little Brown YR and um, use the hashtag Flipgrid for all um, so hashtag Flipgrid for all. Okay, now I'm posing. And I'm not going to pose for too long. I'm probably going to be talking through it, but that's okay. Okay, um, so now I'm going to get to some questions. Let's see. Um, Mia from Senorita Medina's fifth grade class has, how many drawings um, you had to do in order to get to your final ones for the book? That's a really good question, Mia. Um, I do a lot, a lot of sketches, probably like 10 to 15 sketches um, per book or per character. So for like little leaders, you know, it's, it's kind of simple that they're all, um, they all have the same face. So what I usually am spending my time thinking about is what kind of costume I'm gonna put them in. Sometimes it's really easy. So someone who's pretty iconic might have an outfit that you know you'll put them in but someone from you know a really early period of time maybe before there were before there were cameras you have to kind of guess and do your research on what they might be wearing so one example i remember was um uh, rebecca lee crumpler there were no photographs of her so i had to kind of pull together a lot of research about what women physicians which there weren't that many of the time but um, women nurses and other physicians wore um, to kind of figure out what she would be wearing. So I did a lot of sketches, probably like 10 to 15 little doodles. I do them really tiny, just so I'm not spending too much time on, on um, worrying about being perfect um, to figure it out. So that's a really good question. Um, April Adams asks, um, Vashi, will you ever write a story about your life for us? You're so insp inspirational. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I don't know if I, see myself everyone asks me will you put yourself in one of the little leaders books and I always feel like I don't know if I've done enough yet but maybe one day I will never say no to that because clearly I like to talk and I have a lot to say so maybe I'll have a story to write um, Naomi asks 
what was your favorite thing to illustrate and what is your favorite book? Um, I had a lot of fun illustrating um, a book I illustrated called Sue, written by Lupita Nyong'o, because I really love drawing outer space. I love drawing stars. I love drawing the moon. I love drawing astronauts and people going on adventures. So um, I had a lot of fun with that, picking out really you know sweet and beautiful colors for that character and creating um, kind of embodiments of the moon and the sun and night. And that was like really uh, like a challenging but fun project for me. Um, and my favorite book, I think, you know, of the books that I've worked on, I definitely have a soft spot for, um, for the ones that I've created. And I really had a lot of fun working on my second book, Little Dreamers, Visionary Women Around the World, because it's filled with the stories of uh, artists and scientists. Um, so, you know, there was a lot to learn, but I had a lot of fun reading about these people because I feel so inspired by them. Um, so that one's probably my favorite. Um, a question from uh, HG, what program do you use to draw on your drawing tablet? Um, sometimes, most of the books that I've illustrated I've done in Photoshop, um, but sometimes I draw in Procreate on the iPad and sometimes I draw in Notes. Um, and like I said, uh, I spent a lot of time drawing in traditional materials. So I've got crayons, I've got pastels, I've been working on, on with a lot of paper collage recently. So it's kind of whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Um, Aaron Scott Brown asks, how do you design your characters? Um, designing characters can be uh, difficult at times because you may not know where to start. I really try to be inspired by the character. Um, so this would be an example for like a book like um, Hair Love or Sulwe, when I get to read the story and really try to put myself in that character's shoes and try to imagine who that person is. And so I'm really thinking about how are they feeling in this moment and how can I show that on the screen or on the page. Um, but when I came up with the characters for the Little Leaders books, I had something else in mind entirely. I wanted to create a book that told the story of all these wonderful people in history. You know, um, lots of folks, you know, I feel like I, I felt like I heard a lot of the same stories in Black History Month over and over and over again. So I really wanted to challenge myself to learn about new people. And when I was a kid, I wasn't so into history. So I thought, how can I make something that's really sweet and really pretty that way I'm going to want to keep learning about history. And so that was what was going in my mind. How can I make them feel really loving and, and really pretty so that folks who may not love history will want to open this book and read it over and over again. Um, okay, a few more questions. I have uh, Ms. McGuire's grade seven class. How do you select who is featured in the book? It's a really good question. Um, my first book, this one, Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History, was inspired by Black History Month. And uh, when Black History Month came from um, something that was invented by the historian Carter G. Woodson, founded in 1926, Negro History Week. It was just a week to celebrate the stories that have been long neglected throughout history. And I thought, I really wanted to keep that in mind. So knowing that that's where Black History Month came from, I wanted to find people who you may not necessarily have heard of um, in your other books or you know, in your other classes. So I was really thinking about that. But another thing that was really at the forefront of my mind was a question um, that lots of young people get asked. Um, and you guys have probably been asked this question. It's, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, and I didn't necessarily love this question when I was little because I changed my mind a ton of times. Um, and I had no idea what I wanted, quite honestly. Um, but I wanted to make sure I filled these books with people who did as, as diverse a list of things as possible. So yeah, we have doctors and lawyers, but we also have pilots and engineers and astronauts and poets. Um, so there might be something in here for everyone. So that's really a lot of what I was thinking about were you guys, the people who are reading these books and getting inspired by these people. One thing that I did later in life was I started making movies when I was in college and I got to teach young people and I thought, oh my goodness, 
what if I had known about making movies when I was in seventh grade, if I was, when I was in third grade, you know, how, how different would my life have been if I knew about Julie Dash or if I knew about um, Audre Lorde when I was your age. So I was really thinking about that when I decided who would go into the books. Okay. Um, a few more questions. Um, who is your favorite little leader, legend, dreamer, or, <laughs> or leader that you've created? Um, well, you know, like I said, I have a soft spot for a lot of the artists and um, one person who continues to inspire me all the time is this person right on the cover, Augusta Savage. She was a sculptor, an artist during the Harlem Renaissance. And sadly, you know, her story is really beautiful, but it's also quite tragic in that, you know, making art was always a struggle for her. She designed these incredibly beautiful, huge sculptures and statues, but because, you know, statues get cast in very expensive materials, many times um, her work was never able to be built because it was too expensive. And so a lot of it doesn't last and you can't see it today. We can only see photographs of it today. Um, but still, even though it was difficult, even though it was complicated, even though she suffered incredible prejudice in, in her work field, she still found a way to keep making art and, find, and found that, that joy and passion. And the other thing she did was uh, she started a school and she educated young people and she felt like the work that they created could also be a part of her legacy. And I think that that's so beautiful. Um, so I, I hope to be as you know, as passionate and, and as strong-willed as she is. Um, second graders in Virginia, who is your favorite illustrator? Oof, that is a big question because I love a lot of contemporary illustrators. Um, some folks that I know and folks that you probably know, I really love Dan Santat's work. You may have seen his books, um, like his new one, Lift with Min Lei. Um, I really love um, someone I wrote about in Little Dreamers, um, I really love Mary Blair, who made a lot of artwork for the Walt Disney Company. And I also love Gaio Fujikawa, who illustrated lots of children's books. And she was kind of a pioneer of creating books that featured children of every different color. So making sure that lots of children were able to see themselves in their books. And she also worked for Disney. Um, and she, I, like, I love her work so much. I wish I could be like her. Okay. Um, let's see. How long have you been making books? Um, I haven't been doing this for very long, just about five years. Um, as I mentioned before, I used to make movies before that. Um, but I, when I was in school studying movie making, I took a drawing class and it kind of sparked something in me. I drew a lot when I was little, when I was your age. Um, and I drew <laughs> lots and lots of things that I copied. I copied my favorite characters from the TV. I copied things from magazines and from books. But I don't know if I really knew what I was doing with my drawing. Um, and I really loved movie making when I first discovered it, right? But when I took this drawing class when I was in, college, in graduate school, it kind of re rekindled this love I had for drawing. And I was able to approach it through a new lens, through a new perspective of wanting to tell stories and share them with young people. So that's why I am so passionate about doing this now, is being able to tell a story through a drawing and sharing them with young people. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more new questions come up. Um, so I think that's probably where we'll end it. Um, I really appreciate you guys um, being here. I really am so glad to have been able to spend this time with you. Um, thank you for drawing along with me and thank you for taking your selfies. Um, so these were really good questions. If you want to continue the conversation, um, you guys can, like I said before, check out Flipgrid. Um, there will be a link posted in the chat um, where you can find the discovery library and um, that will be associ that's associated with um, today's field trip. So like I mentioned, um, that coloring page and the worksheets will be at the link. So check that out before you log off and um, continue to uh, work on your, your pieces. I really wanna see your drawings and I wanna see the selfies that we took together. Um, so again, you can uh, tweet at me, at Vashti Harrison, at Flipgrid, at Little Brown YR, and I look forward to seeing everything you've created, okay?
Thank you guys.